из такой далекой страны, но такой близкой для нас. From the rogue to Russia, on the news watch in the Soviet Union. Now, here is Ron Brown. Grants Pass is about as typical a Southern Oregon city as you could ask for. It still takes pride in calling itself the All-America City, an honor it won several years ago. And this All-America City now has a sister city in a very unlikely place, the Soviet Union. With the crumbling of the Berlin Wall and other symbols of the Cold War, the world is changing, and now Grants Pass is part of that change. Come with us tonight as we see how the sister city relationship developed as we go from the road to Russia. Rubsovsk is a city in Siberia, the vast Asian part of the Soviet Union half a world away from Southern Oregon. And as different as the two places are, they found some common ground through an interesting route. Early this year, Josephine County residents were busy searching for a sister city. Galice resident, Cindy Patterson, told them about Rubsovsk. Patterson and her family spent two months in the Soviet city. The Pattersons also hosted a group of rafters from Rubsovsk on an exchange. And with the thawing of the Cold War, Patterson said Rubsovsk might make a great sister city. But not everyone liked the idea. Lingering Cold War feelings led some Josephine Countyans to challenge the sister city plan. We are opposed to the establishment of a sister city relationship with any city inside the USSR until the Soviet rhetoric, rhetoric on Glasnost and Perestroika has been matched by deeds of implementation. The people in charge weighed all the input and went ahead and drafted a sister city agreement with the leaders of Rubsovsk. That done, it was now time to see the place in person. And in late August, an official delegation went on the visit. Grants Pass City and community leaders joined two area high school students for the trip, and we tagged along too, and what a trip it was. After some 16 hours on planes, we arrived in Moscow, the Soviet capital, for our first glimpses and impressions of Soviet life. But the traveling was not over. Rubsovsk is about as far from Moscow as Grants Pass is from Washington, D.C. So after another flight to the regional capital, we truly discovered traveling Soviet style. We felt every bump and pothole of the rutted Russian roads. And we noticed some other differences too, like only three gas stations on a 300 mile ride. And instead of Ford, Chevys, and Hondas, we saw Volgas, Moskvichs, and Ladas. At last, the delegation reached Rubsovsk and a warm welcome in Lenin Square. Rubsovsk is an industrial city of some 176,000 people without a single tourist hotel. So the Grants Pass delegation stayed in private homes with Russian families. Great way to get a first-hand look at life here. Rubsovsk is a place straddling the line between the old and new. Old log houses still fill the spaces between apartment buildings. It's a remnant of the days before the Russian Revolution. Apartments are usually three or four rooms. Furniture is compact and space is cramped. But rent is cheap, only 5 to 10 percent of the average monthly income of 300 rubles a month, or about $50. By comparison, the U.S. dollar will buy six Russian rubles at the official exchange rate. But many people are taking advantage of an opportunity to build and own their own homes. But the quality of private construction is sometimes much better than the government-built apartments, 
and the wait is often much shorter. An apartment building usually takes two years or more to complete. Another source of frustrations for many people is the lack of variety in state-run stores. There seems to be adequate food, but the best vegetables are grown in private gardens and sold in outdoor markets. And this is an economy where food is usually available, especially in agricultural areas. But in short supply in Moscow and other major cities, it's largely due to poor distribution systems. Now, with all the systems inadequacies, you might think people would just give up. But the Russians are hardy people, having lived with adversity most of their lives. The memory of World War II is still very much alive in the Soviet Union, even here in Rubsovsk. In fact, it was World War II that probably had more than anything to do with the future of Rubsovsk. Factories that manufactured vital agriculture and war equipment moved from the war front in the west to the safer lands in the east. And almost every city, town, and village in the Soviet Union has a memorial to the millions who died in World War II. In Moscow, a newlywed couple continues a Russian tradition of placing a bouquet on the tomb of the unknown soldier outside the Kremlin walls. And in Rubsovsk, the hundreds who died are also given a place of honor. But while Soviet citizens recognize the past, they certainly don't live in it, Rubsovsk is an example of a place trying to keep up with modern times. Electric, non-polluting buses take workers by the thousands to offices and factories every day. Heat and hot water are produced at central locations and carried to hundreds of apartment buildings by a massive system of pipes. And yes, television is a daily part of Soviet life. Soviets may not spend as much time watching TV as we do, but they are taking to other American pastimes. The Grants Pass delegation joined their hosts in a game of softball. No real attempt was made to keep score, and since there were no losers, the pressure was off and goodwill came out on top. Outdoor activities are a big part of recreational life for many people in this region. After weeks of rain, the warm sunshine brought out a Siberian delicacy, mushrooms. Host families and their American guests took to the woods where they gathered a small mountain of the edible fungi. A picnic on the lakeshore near Rubsovsk gave the group from Grants Pass a further glimpse into the lighter side of Soviet life. Limited cultural and entertainment options make social gatherings a prime escape for many Soviet citizens. On the night before the American delegation left, a special music review was staged, featuring amateur dancers and musicians from Rubsov's factories. Featured was a new composition, a new song in honor of Rubsov's. <laughs> Rubsovs may be far from the center of the revolution sweeping the Soviet Union, but the people here are watching closely as 70 years of socialism undergoes its biggest transformation yet. That transformation won't be an easy one. We've already seen plenty of news reports about the upheaval in the Soviet Union, some evidence of which we saw for ourselves on our trip from the road to Russia. But stay with us tonight as we continue to explore Grants Pass's sister city, its accomplishments, its problems, and next, the places where its people go to work every day. <laughs>